Hello everyone, welcome back to the super amazing show that I've planned. I've got another superstar guest today. I have Ryan Gover, who was most recently in Chicago. Do you want to sort of tell everyone how that came about? So, uh, Chicago was a bit of a surprise one. Um, it's something that I've always wanted to do. It's a musical I've always wanted to be a part of. Um, and I first auditioned for it when I was 21, so I was quite young at the time. And I got to the finals, didn't get the job, I was gutted. And then the opportunity came around a couple of years later, I think it was around 2005. And again, it was for the UK tour, auditioned again, got to the finals, and then didn't get it again. So it's one of those shows that I thought, oh my God, hopefully there's still a chance. And then last year, there was just a random day of auditions and it was primarily the um, international tour cast were South African, but they did an uh, audition day in the UK because they needed some covers and things like that. So I just went for that one day and then, um, yeah, found out that I got it the following week and it was just a bit of a dream come true. Amazing. So how long were you in Chicago for? So it was a short run. Um, so we actually did nine weeks and we were in China, funnily enough. So um, yeah, it was a nine week stint over Christmas, um, but it was a good, a good run. And we got to see a lot of places um, in, in China, which was great fun. So what would you say was the highlight of being in China? Getting to see the Great Wall. Um, we also had a day trip to see the pandas, which was just incredible. Um, so it's China's somewhere that I never thought I would get to in my life. Um, and just to yeah, stand on the Great Wall, and you've seen it in so many films, and, and get to do that, that, that was breathtaking. And I actually FaceTimed my parents when I was up there. Um, so yeah, that was quite a weird experience. Um, so yeah, that was magical. And then um, just doing the show in general, getting to getting to work with South Africans was different. So again, they've got a totally different theatre um, industry to what we have, um, but they were a great, great laugh. Um, and also just doing the show itself was, was a real highlight. Amazing. So one of the shows you did before uh, Chicago was 42nd Street. Yes. Um, how long ago was that? When was, when was your run in 42nd Street? So if I remember rightly, I think we started the run in 2017 um, and then we did a couple of years. So we finished um, 2019 in the January. Um, so it was the longest I've been in the show for, but um, I don't know if you saw the show. Did you see 42nd Street? Uh, no, it, sorry. It was like a, a full spectacle, lots of dancing. Um, and if you love tap dancing, then that was the kind of show that you go and see. So I yeah, had a great time in that show and I didn't really want to leave after the first year. So the, to get the opportunity to stay on was, was great. So do you prefer doing longer, like your two year stint or do you prefer doing like your, was it nine weeks? Which one was, would you prefer uh, doing? Oh, it's, that's a tricky question because I actually don't mind. I like the balance of both. I think it's healthy to definitely move on from a job um, if, if you're feeling a bit stale or if you're getting a bit tired in the show. I don't think it's good to stay on in a production if you're feeling like that. So I've always told myself one year is enough. Um, but, but no, generally a year has been great and it flies by, like time goes so quickly. Um, so, but then with the opposite end of the scale, with the shorter contracts, you get such a variation. So in one year, you could potentially do up to three or four jobs and all of them being different. So it gives you a bit of um, variety there. Amazing. So another show that you've been in is Cats, which I have to ask, have you seen the new Cats movie? I haven't, no. Uh, so yeah, I, it's on my list to see. I have seen one clip, however, on YouTube. I watched the Rebel Wilson tap um, section for the Gumby Cat. But otherwise, no, I've read all the reviews, but I kind of want to watch it and make my own mind up once I've seen the full, full thing. <laughs> kind of funny that the people I've interviewed so far that have been in Cats have all been like, I haven't seen it yet. And it's just, it's just, it's just laugh. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Like. I, I would be definitely interested to see it, um, but I think it's just a totally different take on the show in a way. So I don't think you could compare, compare it to the stage show. So how was it for you being in the stage show? Because it's such an iconic show, isn't it? Say that again, it was a... It was such an iconic show. So how was it being in it? Yeah, again, Cats was a bit of a dream. So I, I saw the DVD when I was a boy um, and was just blown away by the dancing in it. 
And I didn't quite appreciate the show as a musical until I was actually doing it. Um, and that's thanks to Chrissy Cartwright, who's the associate choreographer, and obviously Gillian Lynn. Um, so the two of them working and hearing them work was just amazing because the amount of detail in the choreography and in the story, yeah. people don't really realize if they're just watching the show is incredible. So yeah, I felt really privileged to get, get the chance to do that show. Um, and it's been a show that's been quite kind to me. So I did the, the UK tour first of all, then we transferred um, to the London Palladium in 2015. Um, and then since that, I've uh, helped put it on in Paris in 2015 and in Vienna. So again, I felt really lucky to kind of get that chance to do the other side of it and be on the creative side too. Um, so it was really fun. Amazing. So the very first show you did was The Wizard of Oz. Yes. Can you remember how, how you got the news that that was your first show and you were doing it, you got the part? Yeah, actually, yeah. So, I, so I'm in Paul at the moment doing lockdown with my um, mum and dad. And funnily enough, I was actually here when I got the phone call uh, for The Wizard of Oz. And I, re I remembered um, it was a bit of a busy time because I'd just left college and I was kind of going to lots of auditions at the time. Um, and I remember there was five rounds for The Wizard of Oz and I kept on getting through the rounds. And obviously you don't want to build yourself up too much thinking, oh, this could be my chance because I had so many rejections before. Um, and then, yeah, I'd had my final on the, on the Thursday, I think it was, came home for the weekend. And then it wasn't until the following Monday that my agent rang me. And uh, it was just the best news to be able to go downstairs, tell mum that I was um, yeah, going to be my first professional job. Um, so it was a really, really special moment. Um, and also the London Palladium for me is a very special theatre because it was the first theatre I went to see um, my first show. So I saw Joseph there with Jason Donovan back in the day. And um, yeah, to, to say that that was going to be my first theatre that I'd be performing in was, was a real treat too. Amazing. So before the interview, I asked you a question and I asked you to think of what your answer would be. And that question is, if you could be in any show for one night only with no age stereotypes or gender stereotypes, and you'd have full costume, full lights, and a full audience for that one night, which character, which musical and why? Well, I'm sure you probably get this answer a lot. Um, I would probably have to say Elphaba in Wicked, purely because, again, that show for me was the, one of the shows growing up that really changed my whole focus of musical theatre. And I just fell in love with the story. Again, I love the whole take of uh, Oz and how they've changed that and played with that um, idea. And I just think her songs are big belters. She gets some great moments. She gets to paint herself green every night. So yeah, and for one night, I'm sure it's a bit more manageable than doing it eight shows a week. <laughs> Good choice. So now I have some questions for you I haven't warned you about, but here goes. If you had to pick between, and you have to listen carefully to get confused, if you had to pick between only listening to one original cast recording for the rest of your life, that you could listen to it as many times as you wanted, or listening to any cast recording you want, but never going back to it after you listen to it once, what would you pick? Oh, gosh. So I, I guess to choose one cast recording, and you can listen to it as much as you want, or you can have them all, but only once in your whole life will you be able to listen to that cast recording. I think I'd have to listen to them all and just, yeah, have to listen to them once. Good choice. I get that choice a lot. <laughs> um, next question. If some producers out there decided they were going to make Ryan Gover the musical, who would play you and you can't play yourself? Oh gosh, well, <laughs> who would play me? Um, does it have to be someone similar age to me? You can pick whoever you want. Okay. If who would you pick? If they said to you, the producer said, all right, Ryan, we're making this musical. You, can, you have full control of who plays you. We can try everything else, but we, you pick who plays you. I would have to say, I'm going to go celebrity casting. Um, and I would have to say Jake 
Gyllenhaal, I wish. <laughs> Good choice. That's an amazing choice. Um, my next question for you is the most random question I ask everyone. And it is, if you had to give up musical theatre forever or be an all singing, all dancing sheep, what would you pick? With the knowledge that you once were human and you have to live in a field and eat grass. Oh my goodness. Um, I think I'd go for the sheep. He sounds like loads of fun. So I'd be the best sheep in the, in the field for sure. <laughs> Singing and dancing away. Good choice. And the final question I have for you before we go on to the, the closing is if you had to pick, if you could pick any Disney princess to be, which one would you pick and why? Good question. Okay. Um, I would pick Rapunzel. Um, because I think she's a bit feisty, but she's quite cool and she's young and fun. Um, I like her little sidekick, the little lizard. Yeah. And also as well, the fact that she stayed in a tower, like, I know it's very similar to what we're up to now, but I quite like my own space too. So I'm very much uh, sometimes Rapunzel, but then when I am out and about, like, it's, it's nice to be out in the world. <laughs> Good choice. Um... We're coming to a close now, but first things first is thank you so much for giving up your time. It's been amazing. You've been amazing. And if anyone wants to follow you on social media, how do they do that? Okay, so um, you can find me on Instagram. It's Ryan underscore Gover. Um, and you'll see my face probably or Twitter. And you can find me there. Same, same name as well. Okay, cool. And what's your advice for everyone stuck in lockdown right now? Keep positive. Keep well. Um, keep listening to theatre. If musical theatre is your thing, just keep on listening to it and remembering why we love it so much. Keep dancing if you can. Just find any space uh, you can possibly find in your house and keep motivated and moving. And yeah, we'll get out of this. I know we will. You all heard it from the superstar. Um, last thing I need to say is please make sure you donate to the link in the description. It's down there and make sure that you donate because it's a very important cause. It's acting for others and it's helping people who are, especially now, who haven't have lost jobs because of this pandemic going around the world. And if you can just donate as much as you can, every penny helps. And thank you again for coming on the show. I think You're there's welcome. only one more thing to say before I close. And that is that we should make sure that we 